Welcome you to Revive Talk today. We have such an interesting topic and such a great guest for today. You know, in our society, we've been dealing with this whole virus thing, uh, and it means a lot to every single person. Uh, you are trying to figure out what you can do and what you can't do, where you can go, where you can't go. You're rushing the stores trying to find toilet paper. Uh, you're having to deal with, can we go to the beach? Can we not? Uh, and then there's a, an entire other side of this conversation, a group of people who are dealing with this in a way that we see and we will run into, but maybe we haven't thought about. And that's our law enforcement group. What is it like from the law enforcement side of what's going on? So today I want to welcome as our guest, Sheriff William D. Snyder. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. You. And, and I, I want to start with this question today. How are your officers holding up in this crazy time? Well, I appreciate you asking the question. I would tell you, in, in a nutshell, we're strong. But in a, more, in a more diffuse thought, I would tell you that it has been extremely challenging. You know, we go to the police academy and we learn how to handcuff people. We learn how to do searches. We learn the law, search and seizure. We know how to do felony traffic stops. We learn how to shoot our gun. We know how to tangle with the criminal element. What they didn't teach us was how to protect ourselves from a virus, and they didn't tell us how to interact with the majority of law-abiding people who are suddenly called upon to sacrifice some of their freedoms for the collective good. But the bottom line is, we're doing just fine. How has, uh, how has the general citizenship of Martin County been to work with? Are you finding them to be very defiant? Are you finding them to be compliant? In the main, the majority of people in Martin County have done the right thing. They've done what their president has asked. They've done what the governor has asked. They've done what the county commission has asked. We, we are finding some people who are reluctant to follow the rules. And it puts us in an awkward position because as the sheriff, I sent the message, we're not arresting our people. We are not an occupying army. Mm -hmm. We work for the people in this community, and let's use education and friendly persuasion. And that has worked. Right. But I will close to that answer by saying we have hurt some feelings. Mm -hmm. We have ruffled some feathers. And just the fact mm -hmm. that we're the law enforcement community, I've taken on, we call them haters, people on social media that just rant about me. And, and I've been right. more of the libertarian, constitutional, Let's give people a break. Mm -hmm. But because I'm the sheriff, I'm the target of any angst they have with government. Well, it, it kind of puts you in an awkward spot, too, because you're having to enforce the law, like a newly made law, a temporary law, that you may or may not even personally agree with. I, I don't know. But that well, must be tough. Well, that's, that's a dynamic all of us in law enforcement face. We are not the law. Right. makers were mm -hmm. the law enforcers. Right. I was in the Florida legislature for six years, and I had the honor of passing probably a dozen laws, all dealing with law enforcement and public safety. And I remembered every time I, I wrote, I authored a bill, I thought, how does this look to the road patrol deputy at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> when they're trying to use a statute book under, under bad lighting to make a charge? Right. And so I always tried to... Uh, to make laws that, that seem to make sense, at least to me. And so we're used to, in our industry, though, enforcing laws that just don't make sense. Mm. You know, it's that question, like, what were they thinking <laughs> when they wrote this law? Yeah. Did you right. really expect us to enforce it? Mm -hmm. And some of the regulations and some of the guidances mm -hmm. that have been uh, given to us to enforce mm -hmm. are difficult for us to conceptualize, like, I, without getting into specifics, some of them are just don't give themselves to sane law enforcement or mm -hmm. realistic enforcement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think part of the difficulty of this whole time is having to face something we've never faced before. Uh, and then you have kind of two groups out there. You've got the uh, liberty and constitutional side, uh, and you've got the let's keep everybody safe and put in control side. And I think you guys are just caught in the middle of that. So uh, in, in a general statement, where would you say you stand on the, the liberty versus safety conversation? 
I, it, it reminds me of a famous politician one time, and he was asked a tough question about where he was on the issue. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, some of my friends are for it, and some of my friends are against it. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be with my friends. <laughs> so the moral to that That's story good. is, I, I don't believe there's anything more valuable to us than our personal liberty. Mm. Right. That's above all else. You know, mm. Patrick Henry said, I would rather have death than to lose my liberty. And I stand with Patrick Henry. Mm -hmm. And yet I've also seen these horrible uh, stories of people gasping for their last breath on a respirator. Mm -hmm. So there's two truths existing True. on the same bowling lane. Yes, we're, we're, we're free-born Americans with inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, liberty. But we are also human beings, and if the virus gets to us, we could find ourselves on a respirator, dying a horrible death. So is there some way to protect people from having to get on a ventilator and at the same time guard constitutional rights? And so maybe I'm not giving you the exact answer. I guess if you forced me to say, well, which side are you more on? I'm more on the side of, of liberty. Yeah. And I, I would rather mm -hmm. die a free man than live a slave. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things in light of that conversation. What kind of things do you see that should concern people when it comes to the loss of liberty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that, that's a great question. And here's, what, here's how I would answer that. Bureaucracy has two rules. Immutable laws of bureaucracy. Rule number one is continue. And rule number two is to get bigger. Mm -hmm. So the analogy, just to continue a bit, a dog that never bit is a dog that doesn't bite until it bites the first time, mm -hmm. and then it's a biter forever. Mm -hmm. So a government that has found a way to strip us of liberties and rights to accomplish a legitimate goal, keeping people off respirators, do we all agree, is a legitimate goal. But have you chose a legitimate way to do that? And so my fear is that government now has gotten a taste of a control they never had before. True. Close that business. Don't go here. Don't go there. Don't do this. This is the time you can do it. This is the time you have to stop doing it. The rules are, are, have been endless and all mm -hmm. over the board. I don't know how that rolls back because like the dog that bit the first time, mm -hmm. you now have governments throughout the entire country from Key West mm -hmm. to Seattle, from the, mm -hmm. from the president of the United States to the smallest a uh, city council member mm -hmm. who've gotten a taste of control that they never had before. And I hope that they lose that taste very fast and that we get back to being uh, as free as we were before this happened. Right. You know, it's been such a disbursement. Uh, you know, there are sheriffs who are standing up and saying, I will not enforce an unconstitutional law. Uh, and there is obviously this uh, uh, the governor's executive orders and all of these things coming down. And And so what what maybe in a nutshell can you say appears that is the new norm that is not going to change? In other words, how are we going to handle this the same in the future if we don't change something? I think the new norm is going to occur on two fronts. I think the one norm will be the operational norm. You're already seeing big corporations getting ready to reopen their doors, putting in a plexiglass between uh, of working yes, stations, mm -hmm. sure. airline industries, trying to think through, you have to wear a mask, you have to have extra seats. Mm -hmm. So I think like after 9-11, we became a country on edge and mm -hmm. we began losing freedoms there that we just right. took for granted one minute and then they were gone. You have to mm -hmm. go through magnetometers to go into certain buildings. You, yeah. you can't, mm -hmm. the, the list is endless. So I think mm -hmm. on an operational sense, that that is is not going to change. And then what I alluded to before, the the ability for government to control things that they never controlled before mm -hmm. is not going to completely evaporate. And we're already thinking about the next uh, uh, pandemic. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think personally, I think it's shocking. I think it's shocking uh, the lack of recognition of what this means for our future. Uh, in other words. Uh, are we going to get into the fall uh, or maybe next spring when the flu season's come around and now we're mandated to wear masks to go into stores because the flu bug is out there again? Uh, what does this mean for um, churches? Uh, we've talked a little bit about that. 
uh, when it comes to can they meet, can they not meet, uh, even even the, the ridiculousness of a church having a drive-in service where people are sitting in their cars and yet they're having citations written to them because they came to a church service. Uh, it, it just seems that there's no end to how far uh, this can be taken. And if we don't recognize now that we can't allow this to continue in this direction, uh, then uh, liberty is going to become a thing that's uh, uh, a forgotten past issue. Well, liberty lost is not easily regained. And I would suspect you've used this illustration from the pulpit. The way, how do you boil a frog? Slowly. You throw it in boiling water, it jumps out if you raise the temperature. The whole idea of privacy has changed in this country beyond our imagination. We are old enough to remember a time when there was such a thing as privacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that privacy of those days are gone and are never coming back. Mm. So slowly but surely, history has taught us that, that a, a, our history in this country and other countries have taught us that you can slowly lose your liberty without realizing it. Right. You know, if 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 a enemy country mobilized on our shore and we could see it, we would grab our tactical rifles and we would go to war to protect our liberty. But we're not seeing this. We're we're kind of sensing it. We have this unease about mm -hmm. what they're doing. I mean, anybody with any intuition or thought should be at least cognizant of the fact that all of a sudden government can tell. A church, you can't meet. Yeah. You could argue all day long whether that was right or wrong, but they did it. They told restaurants, you're all closed. You could argue, well, is that right or wrong? But what you can't argue is they did it. We got used to it. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a revolution. And now the biting dog has bit. The non-biting dog has bit. And my, my, my fear is that under the right circumstance, it will bite again. Uh, no, it's good. I, I, I think we definitely can expect it to bite again. And now mm -hmm. the question is, how will we respond to that bite? Uh, to shift gears a little bit, I know that you had some questions about uh, other kind of calls that the uh, enforcement's having to deal with. I, I do. And I had a thought before that, actually, while Sheriff Snyder was talking. Um, we see some people pushing back. We see people trying to have their voice on Facebook. We see certain companies like maybe YouTube or Facebook trying to monitor free speech and people being very concerned about it. So I remember a few weeks ago, I was watching t uh, TV during the day and um, it came on a, a live stream in Wisconsin where people were rebelling, was it was no, Michigan, people were rebelling to the, the law and the governor and what they were saying. They were tired of being stuck inside and not being able to go to the store to buy even maybe fertilizer to be able to plant, you know, right. in their own yard. So we see them pushing back, and yet if people push back in those ways, it does affect you because now, you know, you're the one with the crowds and the control. We haven't seen it in this area because I, I don't think our regulations have been as extreme as in some air, other areas. But what, I don't know, just thoughts on that or, you know, because it's kind of a danged if you do and danged if you don't type of situation. Well, that's a delicate balance for law mm -hmm. enforcement. The, the, the best way to affect change is through the ballot box, to mm -hmm. elect conservative people who believe in the Constitution and value the, uh, the ethos of the Founding Fathers. Having not done that in mm -hmm. some of these jurisdictions, and I know the one you're talking about, like it's the Midwest, either Wisconsin maybe. Or I think there's probably several. Several of them. Mm -hmm. They have elected officials who are less sensitive to personal rights than, mm -hmm. say, the conservative governor of the state of Florida. Right. As a result, mm -hmm. they have these more draconian uh, 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 restrictions in place. Well, I would argue the time to push back was at the ballot box. Now, in a republic, right. we don't make the rules co collectively. We make mm -hmm. it through the people we elected. Mm -hmm. They elected those people, mm -hmm. and they're having to mm -hmm. live with the nightmare. Mm -hmm. So if the question to me was, do I approve of... Um, men and women with uh, tactical rifles going to the state capitol to demonstrate, I'll tell you no. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the one that has to roll a SWAT team in with exactly. a Bearcat and try to work my way through that right. without getting anybody killed. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, I think that there's a ditch on both sides of the road mm -hmm. and that the, the one extreme that took mm -hmm. liberties away has been in the ditch. Those wanting to get it back may have veered into the ditch. Somewhere in the middle, there is a Christian principled way through prayer and, and, and the ballot mm -hmm. box to affect change and uh, 
taking over your, your capital with tactical rifles is, is pretty extreme in the breach. Right. Sure. And I, and I like how you say there, there's a Christian way. Um, would you be able to expand on that, how our faith plays into it? Like, do our rights come from the government? Do our rights come from God? What about when God, the government starts interfering with our God-given rights? Well, from the very beginning, you know, Jesus gave us that principle when they asked him, should we obey? What, what, Caesar, I don't remember, the pastor, you, whatever the mm -hmm. rule was. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, give me a penny. And whose picture is on there? Mm. What's Caesar? Give to mm -hmm. Caesar what is Caesar's. So there is a biblical argument for obeying civil authorities. There's a biblical argument that holds that God raises up rulers and tears them down and that we have to live within, within the civil law as much as possible. There does come a time, there can come a time, mm -hmm. when government becomes so oppressive and does so overtly restrict our rights, our freedom to worship, our, 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 our freedom to raise our children as we see fit, that there could come a time when you could justify as a Christian being more aggressive in asserting your rights. I'm not sure we're there yet, but I'm just one person. And I've often said, if you pass enough laws that I morally can't enforce, I think my obligation would be to leave my industry. I've been sworn to uphold the Constitution, mm -hmm. but and, and not to get off, but just to finish this one point. All of these governors are operating under existing law. They have not created their own law. There are laws that empower governors to have emergency powers. And so how it, it wasn't the law that was unconstitutional. Perhaps it's the way they've implemented the law. Mm -hmm. And there again, and I'm finished, mm -hmm. the ballot box and prayer and peaceful demonstration is right. the way now to affect change and not tactical rifles in government right. buildings. Uh, right. Let's talk a little bit about how Martin County has done. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, in some of the commissioner's meetings that I've been to, uh, the discussion seemed to center around what was going on south of us and how does what's going on south of us create problems for us in the way of opening our beaches and those kind of things. So how have you seen Martin County survive this with, uh, with Miami to our south? Well, I was thinking we could put up a big wall. <laughs> Build a wall. Build a and wall. if you didn't live here, you couldn't come. But being that's, uh, that's not really possible. We, we are getting people, uh, our beaches are open, and we have had Palm Beach County residents here. We know that from talking to beachgoers, we know that from randomly sampling tags. So they're here. The big question will be, the implication really now is for this coming weekend, the county mm -hmm. commission is meeting again tomorrow. I suspect mm -hmm. they're going to talk about, do we keep the beaches open or not? We will, we will, I will be there. They will ask me, what has the pressure been from Palm Beach County? The answer is they're here. I don't know that they're here in the hundreds. Well, they're probably here in the hundreds. I don't know that they're here in the thousands. Yeah. There will be more this weekend if Palm Beach doesn't open up, Palm Beach County. I assume they're not going to. It's, it's pretty late now to open, I think. Right. The governor probably next week, maybe. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's, we, I don't think we're seeing them now in the restaurants and such because I think their restaurants maybe are opening the same phase. I'm not sure. I don't track Palm Beach I County. Okay. I track sure. their burglars. <laughs> when the burgers yeah. come here, yeah. we, we track them, but right. their politics, that's their deal. Mm -hmm. Boat ramps a little crazy right now, too? Boat ramps have been completely capacity, but the parking has been manageable. We've, we've been uh, all over the boat ramps. We've, we've up, up, uh, gotten more people there, there are more deputies there, upstaffed, I've mm -hmm. lost the word. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're able, to, we're able to keep the peace and the parking at least acceptable. What are you seeing that for your officers um, is the biggest headache, the biggest hassle? Well, unlike healthcare workers who know when someone comes in, someone's coming in, they can mask up. Unlike uh, some, some of the other entities that are dealing with this that, that know in advance what they're dealing with, my deputies have in a split second. One minute they're driving, and their mask mm. is, is right where they can grab it. The next second, mm. a crash occurs in front of them or, or a car takes off running, and they don't have enough time to do all the, uh, the PPE yeah. donning that they should mm. do. So the fact that we're in and out of troubled homes all the time in troubled mm. neighborhoods, 
dealing with people who may not be uh, adhering to all the, the rules they're supposed to. Maybe they're sick, they're not telling anybody. Mm. The biggest challenge is that unknown. We just don't know when, we, when we're talking with people. And we have some hot spots in this county where there's a higher percentage of, of, the, uh, of the sickness. As it relates to um, pandemics, a virus, a uh, medical um, issue that we've dealt with here, what have we learned? What have we learned as a county? I, I think we've learned that, that we, we can make some adjustments overnight, and we, we didn't collapse as a community because our beaches were closed or because we couldn't golf or obviously the worst impact was to our small businesses mm -hmm. and, and i'm not speaking for them some of them are going to go bankrupt and so i'm not sure what they learned they, they learned that private enterprise is dicey but i think we've learned as a community that we can get through things if we'll just keep our calm and uh Americans are funny. They don't have all the patience in the world. You know, we're, I've been watching these openings now, and some of them, the argument is they're opening too soon, too, fa too much. Mm. That's because Americans are over it. Yeah. Like, okay, it's time. Look, we've done this. Let's get, back to, let's get back to basics. So I've learned, too, that as a sheriff's office, we can be very adaptable. Fair enough. Um, I, I will say that uh, you and I have known each other for, years just uh you know here and there and crossing paths kind of thing uh and i truly respect you as our sheriff uh well, I, I know you, you to be a man of integrity i know you to be a christian i know you to be a reasonable sounding voice in all of this and mm -hmm. i truly truly appreciate you in the in the role mm -hmm. that you're in right now and what you're doing for us well thank you very much i i pray every day for the men and women at the sheriff's office mm -hmm. i i we had a trooper was killed down the interstate mm -hmm. several well, it's been a couple of few yes. months now. And we have a challenge coin with his name on it. It's in my pocket as I speak. And every mm -hmm. time I, I put it in my pocket, I pray for my, my mm -hmm. troops. And when I put my hand in my pocket and feel it, I pray for my troops. They have a very difficult job. My job, look, I'm in the office a lot. I don't face what they face. Although I get out more than my legal advisor wants me to. <laughs> but but they, they, have, they have performed flawlessly. Throughout this, not one person has come in and said, "You know, I have a wife who, or a husband who's sick. I can't." I, nobody has come in and said, "I cannot come to work." Mm -hmm. What great. would you, uh, maybe in a, in a in a in a time of wrapping this up for today, uh, what what would you like to say to your team and to your officers? I would like to say that we throw the word hero around a lot today. Yeah, you know, there was a time when hero meant the Marine on Guadalcanal who charged into the uh, machine gun nest. And now we use it just all over the place. But I will tell you that I would tell my people, my men and women, from my civilians that have had to uh, talk to people in the lobby, to my corrections deputies who have four or 500 people locked up against their will, to my first responders who have to go knock on a door at three o'clock in the morning because there's, there's a report of, of domestic violence. I would say to every one of them, they have performed heroically. Yeah. They, are, they are true heroes. They will never get the credit that they're due. And uh, I am proud to serve along with them. Fantastic. Do you have anything well, else? I, I do. Um, we've lived, I've lived in other counties within Florida, and we, we just love it here in Martin County. There's a different feel, and there's a very... Um, professional and feeling um, there's u unity in this um, county, but it's evident that it's run, that it has good leadership. Yes. We've watched you at the county commission meetings and just how you conduct yourself and handle yourself and the people that you lead. And so it, it is a, it's a, it's an excellent feel in this county, but it comes with good leadership and it comes from good leadership. And you always acknowledge, you know, that it's, it's through Christ that it's, you know, because we're believers and God sets you know, the tone for who we are. And I believe that that just resonates through this county. Who you are impacts everyone. And like Todd mentioned, we've been able to look to you for, for years, and I have never heard a bad word about you. So whatever, you know, you say, social media, whatever, I have only seen oh. and heard good. And so we're very proud of that. We're very proud to be in Martin County and for the support that, that we have here and for the church. 
we feel covered and protected in this area, and we thank you. Well, thank you, and, and maybe as a closing thought, and, and, I, and I, I detest false humility, I don't like it, but I can tell you, I was a street cop in Dade County when I was 20 years old, and mm -hmm. that's all I ever wanted to do. And somehow, God has seen fit to orchestrate my life to where I am today, and I give myself none of the credit, and really, truly, all the credit belongs to him. Amen. And what you said about me is kind, and thank you for it. But the men and women that I lead that are out there as we speak in these hot polyester uniforms as it begun, begins to get hot, trying to keep people safe, are the true heroes. Yes. And I'll pass your, your remarks on to them. And then if you'll think to pray for the sheriff's office, and uh, if your church will, people, I understand yes. you may be playing this on, on mm -hmm. some yes. other something. Uh, they'll think to pray for the men and women of the sheriff's office, the Florida Highway Patrol, the city of Stewart, uh, all, all law enforcement throughout the country. Uh, I would be honored if, if, if one person hears this and prays for us. I was Amen. glad that I spent the time here. Amen. Uh, would you be good if we prayed right now? Absolutely. Father God, I just thank you so much. I thank you so much for your love for us, for your grace for us, for your mercy for us. I thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, to sit and talk about relevant topics of the day, God, and, and to know uh, that in our sheriff's department, we are led by a man of God. I thank you so much uh, for William Snyder. I thank you for who he is in our community. I thank you for the job he's doing. I ask you, God, to bless them especially during this yes. time. Bless them with a peace that goes beyond their understanding. Bless them with a courage and a strength and a comfort uh, that comes in the times of chaos. Uh, I ask you to bless uh, the officers as they're on the street to uh, be able to see and to hear and to know things that would give them the wisdom to keep themselves safe and to protect us. So God, I thank you uh, for Sheriff Snyder and I thank you for this day and the many blessings that you have given us through this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I want to thank you all for joining us today at Revive Talk with uh, our Sheriff uh, William Snyder. Uh, remember him uh, when it comes time to vote that position again. Uh, thank you for joining us today. God bless you and have a good day.